joined today by Anders Lundström. Now, Anders is the Strategy Product Manager, Control Plane on Solution Area Packet Core at Ericsson Digital. Anders, great to see you. Thanks for making time to catch up with me. Hey, thank you, Des. Good to see you. Indeed. And uh, thank you very much for making time to go into the office as well. I really appreciate it uh, during this challenging time. Uh, but I suspect that it's great to get a little bit of time out of the house during the, the work from home period. Uh, uh, like you, I, I, I work from home a lot, but uh, it's also great just to get out and about a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure it is. So, but uh, now with the family back home and all of that, you get a break. You come to the office, you get some work done. So, perfect, good to see you here also again. Indeed, it's almost like a, a reversal of our normal roles. Now, to quickly yeah. introduce you to our audience, um, you're currently the strategic product manager for Packet Core Controller within Solution Line Packet Networks in Ericsson Digital in Sweden. Um, you're responsible for cloud native product transformation of EPC and 5G C control plane, a key enabler for 5G. Previously, you've held a lead role for Ericsson Virtual EPC and in the development of a 3G PP2 migration for part, or migration path, I should say, for LTE and EPC. And you spent many years working in the US in a whole range of positions. Um, an amazing background and, and such an amazing experience to draw on here. I'm really, really looking forward to this conversation we're about to have. So let's dive straight into it. Um, let me start yeah, with a very you. simple question then. Um, you know, a lot of people see 5G as just another G. It's like it's like 5G but faster. Um, but you know, I think we we generally know from the telco and carrier point of view, obviously that's not true. But from a consumer perspective, that may seem like it's just another G. Um, but when we think about 5G, I wonder if you could sort of give us a little bit of a, a run through what makes 5G so different from 4G. Yeah. No, but I can start start first with the first one. This uh, is it faster? Yes. It's faster. That's also that's a good thing. So I think consumers are going to see a faster internet experience when they're using 5G. But then it's also so much more. So when you look at the new capabilities being introduced, which part of what we're going to talk about today about the 5G core, what that enables, because that brings it into really bringing it also not just consumer, also bringing it into the enterprise. There are a lot of new capabilities coming in the 5G core here. It's like a, there's something called edge compute. Really, how do you get application compute closer onto the users for better services? But it's also network slicing, new capabilities in the network that wasn't there in 4G sort of natively built in, but now can enable operators and verticals, industry verticals, their own complete network slice, really reaching much more into a mission critical type of segment. So, so it's so much more than fast. It's fast, but it's so much more. So yeah, but a good question. Thank you. With that in mind, um, I, I guess this brings me to my next question. When we think about um, 5G and the whole new radio standalone uh, and 5G core, maybe if you could just give us a little intro into that and kind of why it's so important for 5G networks. Yeah. So, so first, if I move back a second, on the radio side, there is something called this non-standalone, which is basically 5G that are also have a dependency to LTE. And then there is the standalone, which is then can operate 5G on a standalone basic. Uh, from a core network point of view, so what is 5G core? It's really for 4G and for 5G, this non-standalone, it, it was basically built on the old methods of building how to build core networks, but 5G core, is a totally brand new game. And uh, what the core is through, you can really describe the core as the heart of the network. This is uh, what connects all these radio heads and the base stations, providing you so you can move around, you get full internet access and can send packets forth and get an excellent internet experience on your phone and an app experience. So, so a 5G core in that sense, uh, for operators and for the world, this, this is, the largest change we have seen on the packet core side. So there's been a lot of Gs, one, two, G, three, four, which evolved, it used a lot of protocols that was tailor-made for mobile. But, but now really this is changing over into the largest change we have seen. It's a, basically three probably fundamental new principles. There's something called service-based architecture. This is starting to use standard web protocols when you communicate within this 5G core. Uh, moving away from additional sort of mobile only specific ways of protocols into an IT domain, you could say. And secondly, it's cloud native. Uh, previous generations, there has been a lot of boxes uh, being uh, deployed, uh, virtuals was there, but now you bring it into also truly IT with cloud native. And thirdly, 
we're expecting this to become a totally new operational paradigm coming in with much less higher level of automation. So all of that together makes it basically the largest change the mobile core industry have seen. So in a very, very long time or ever. Traditionally, when we think about 3 and 4G, we've often been thinking about that voice and data network infrastructure. But when we think about 5G, just back on what you were saying there, um, I think a lot of people are still learning about the fact that they can look at this as a platform that enables more than just voice and data. So, you know, we're now looking at things like autonomous vehicles moving around. We're looking at robots inside yeah. warehouses. Yeah. We're looking at high density security cameras. And also, I think, um, and I'd love to maybe just circle back on this, there's um, a lot of misunderstanding around the level of connectivity. And when we think about what people might be doing in factories with security cameras, they can only really connect a couple of hundred of those devices to a Wi-Fi access point at a time. But when we think about 5G, it's potentially going to connect millions of devices and, and, and sensors yeah. and everything else. Uh, is this something you think that the industry has fully come to understand yet? Or are we still quite early in that phase to understand that, as you said, the 5G uh, infrastructure 5e core is is really kind of like an internet for multi services, not just the traditional telco services. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I think I think for sure the industry we have, we have all started to consider that and starting to look at that, but it, it hasn't taken off in a big way, really transformed the industries yet. Uh, that, that that is yet to come. But for sure, I think that many carriers and many of our customers are still starting to look at that. This is my target key next type of segment to move into that type of vertical business and enterprise business and move beyond the consumer mobile broadband. So it's definitely on the minds of everybody, I think. And, and 5G Core, in that sense, will offer them some new capabilities there to, that they can leverage in those type of enterprise, tailor-made enterprise offerings. When you mentioned what the new 5G core is built on, and you mentioned that it was cloud-native technology, I wonder if you could elaborate just a little more on specifically what that is, and I guess why it's so yeah. important to the 5G networks. Yeah, no, I can do it. I think the, the cloud-native sort of is foundational part, so the sort of all all the standards and all that, how it was written, how the core was defined, was sort of built around that we should leverage those type of capabilities. So this basically means that we're, the core network is moving into a software only functionalities that now can be freely sort of executing, they can be freely deployed very close to radio or in a large data center, a private cloud on the carriers or in public cloud even. So now you have a much higher level of freedom of how do you deploy this. So meaning that if you can leverage existing data centers to roll out, you avoid a lot of track rows and new hardware and all of that. So if you want to create a specific healthcare type of network slice, you can do that on that type of existing data center infrastructure. So it's moving into a software business. I mean, that makes all of this, what you're saying, this software defined data centers, SDI, everything, even more important to have that thing up and running and have the operational expertise of how to operate the true cloud network. I guess there's and a few then, key yeah. challenges there, isn't there, when they think about that, because, um, you know, as you said before, a lot of them are, have come from a dedicated hardware platform, yeah. so routers and switches, antennas and poles and wires. Yeah. They've, they've now got to, I guess, pivot to the software-defined infrastructure, software-defined networking. They've got to uh, develop the capabilities and skills. They've got to move into network function virtualization and range of things. And also a lot of the exciting things you're doing around from like bare metal Kubernetes, Docker, containerized uh, cloud-native apps. And I know you've done some amazing work with both your operational support systems and your business support systems where OSS and BS are cloud natives in your own cloud. And yeah. these are phenomenal uh, initiatives, which are very exciting because you're, you're leading in that space. Um, yeah. But I, I guess this yeah. also brings me back to another just quick question on the last thing around the importance of the transition to, to I guess, um, yeah. the 5G core being built on cloud native technology. This must be yeah. a significant game changer when we think about just the um, the time to get things to market. So the reduced time on market and also, I guess, reduced time on yeah. ROI, because if you can build and implement things quicker, you can then monetize them quicker. Is that a fair comment? Yeah, I think it is a definitely a fair comment. So if you talk about this, what's the sort of recommendation, what's the key, key things the carrier should do then in, the, in that space, how to think about it. I think it's a it's a few of the aspects and it's a, I think what the what they say dual mode, this is the support of both non, this non standalone as well as standalone is important because they're going to coexist and you're going to have a extreme amount. There's a st extremely strong growth also on 4G right. happening. So you need the support of the network with the interworking in between because 5G standalone coverage is not going to happen overnight. So. So dual mode is one thing to consider on how do you have that to operate one future network. Yeah. But se secondly, in there is, I mean, we talked earlier on about this, it's faster. 
uh, it's these faster peak rates. You know, there's these peak rates now going up to 20 gigabit per user. This is like 50 times. So it's a lot higher than what you would see on a standard cable today. But that means you need high performance user planes. You need to, how do you deal with that increased capacity needs? Uh, and then third, I think that it's, it's the operational change. It's how to operate in a true cloud native environment, how to change your operational procedures around it. Uh, but I think, I guess, most important of all, in my view, would be to get started. You mentioned something interesting there just around thinking about dual mode, and I wonder if we could just circle back on that. I mean, yeah. um, could you maybe just elaborate on what that means for our audience? I mean, some people probably know, um, but we're hearing yeah. a number of different versions of what that actually means. Could you maybe just explain what you, you meant when you talk about the need for dual mode core solution? Yeah, I, I think there's a, there's a lot of di different people in the industry will say this is different things, but all that. But, but in a sense, there is the... 4G core network architecture defined sometimes as well as evolved packet core or EPC, and then there is new 5G core. In a sense, those are also coupled to which type of devices do I have out there? If you have LTE 4G capable devices then, and you have also this first generation 5G non-standalone, they must have the old core, the EPC type of core that I talked about. And then there's the new, what's called some, this technical term is called option two, but this is for standalone. Then you need a 5G core network. In reality, of course, they must coexist because you're moving around. You might be in a 4G only coverage area. And of course you need the service parity. Also want to maximize that, leverage that investment on 4G coverage to provide a similar service across 4G, 5G NSA, and this 5G standalone. So that's a little bit of a dual mode. So your core must deal with both of these technologies at the same time, both of them do, doing it in a cloud native way and enabling the operational transformation. Before yeah. we wrap up, I've one last thing I'd like to sort of just look at. I think there's also a lot of um, uh, misunderstanding around kind of where we're at in this journey. You know, when we think about the transition from the previous Gs, two, three, three to four, They've been fairly iterative, iterative natural steps, as you know, as you said, they're, they're fairly uh, straightforward steps from three to four to four and so forth. But four to five G is a big step. It's not so much a leap, but it's a series of number of big steps. So one of the things that yeah. I think a lot of people ask me is, where are we at on this journey? So are we still at the early days? Are we at the mid road? Are we sort of over the hump and sort of down the other side now going? Where do you see us as far as that goes? I, I wonder if, you know, as a last question, could you maybe just give us some insight on how far has 5G core and NR standalone come in the market so far? And where does this place us in sort of the evolutionary curve of where 5G is going? Yeah. Yeah, if you look at the first, the 5G with this non-standalone, that's now live across the globe. I think there was the events in Sweden yesterday where we did an announcement from Ericsson together with TLA on uh, launching 5G in Sweden. So, but they, it, that is coming on non-standalone. If we'll take this standalone then, which we become from a core network and the true 5G then, uh, this is, we're seeing this getting now launched second half 2020. So we don't see that being live deployed, but second half it will come. Leading markets for that is uh, in China, Korea, Australia, where you are sitting there, you're probably going to see it early. With, there's been some announcements down in Australia also, and US. So we're seeing this will start to take off now from second half 2020. And then uh, from there on, uh, I mean, the, the Ericsson Mobility Recall Fortune, the 5G forecast are tremendously large up until 2025. So we're going to see a big, big change for the next couple of years, I expect. Fantastic. Well, congratulations on the amazing successes you've had of late and all the amazing announcements we've seen, not just in 2020, but in late 2019 with the number of the, the technology advancements you've had and, and just some really massive strides that have been taken and also there's some excitement uh, around just the uptake of it with your, your existing customers and new customers coming along. Uh, and as it's been great to see you, thank you so much for your time. I can't wait to see you in person again soon uh, there in Schuster uh, at uh, Ericsson headquarters. And, um, Keep up the great work, yeah. stay safe. I hope yeah. you and your family are well. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again in person soon. But in the meantime, stay safe and appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you, Des. And you also stay safe out there. So see you later. Indeed. Thank you. Bye.